Good afternoon and welcome to the 1008. I'm Andrew Ballesteri, your host, and thank you for joining me on this afternoon. We're doing this show, the 1008, for you, the viewers who are stuck in advisory right now. And we're just going to be interviewing teachers, students, or anyone else here at HHS that uh, has an interesting story to tell. My first guest today is Mr. Timothy Bailey. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. We just have some questions we were going to ask you. Okay. Um, so first one is, what's your favorite class to teach? Why? What's my favorite class to teach and why? Okay. AP Language and Composition is my favorite class to teach. All right. Because uh, there are a lot of different reasons. But mm -hmm. unlike so much of the curriculum at this school, the AP curriculum is uh, a little more open-ended. Mm -hmm. And I have a great deal more choice in what sort of pieces I get to select, how I go about approaching the subject, and how I go about you know, increasing my students' learning and understanding. So that sort of freedom that I have in there uh, and the quality of the kids that I get in that class, I tend to get pretty high achieving, uh, hard working kids in that class, bright kids, funny kids. Um, the combination of the curriculum and the type of students that that class attracts makes that my favorite class. Mm -hmm. It's basically generally the flexibility and just like the level of the students. Yes, I think it, it's a class that allows me to tap into my creativity a bit more than maybe some other classes do. Um, I also really believe in the concepts, the essential um, questions, the enduring understandings. Uh, the curricular map, as it were, for that class is, and you're a member of that class, so well, full disclosure, yeah. <laughs> uh, the idea of rhetoric and understanding messages and the ability to persuade people and to use the rhetorical appeals and understand the rhetorical situations and how to win an argument, how to persuade, those are skills that have uh, applications in every single area of life. And I have letters. I, I didn't bring them today, but I can produce them. They're, they're real that I get from former AP students who say, um, it's the most valuable thing I learned in high school. I use it every day in every class. I use it, you know, on the street. I use it with my parents. And that's 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 worth a lot to me. It makes me feel good about what I'm doing when kids write me letters, handwritten letters, uh, because I've mentioned that in class, what a handwritten letter means to a person in this modern digital age we live in. When uh, Emma Wyatt, who graduated just um, two years ago, maybe just last year, I can't remember, sent me a letter recently. She's a clerk in Worcester, and she wrote the same thing. Uh, it's the it's the class that I use the most in in college, so that's always nice to hear. That's a wonderful sentiment. Um, Sorry, one of our other questions. Oh yeah, um, pretty boiler quick. Uh, yeah, sorry, boilerplate question. Um, so you said you really enjoy teaching uh, AP students, lower level students. Uh, do you ever think about just you know strangling them? Only you. Only me. <laughs> okay. Nobody else? No. No. That's lame. That's lame. That's lame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Um, is there any trend among students that you just uh, you hate? Uh, you know? I don't know. Hate. Hate's such a strong word. I try not to mm -hmm. get too into that word. There's, sure, there are annoyances. Mm -hmm. I think the person who... The people walking around with their heads buried in their phones mm -hmm. is annoying. Yeah. Um, especially when they're on the stairs in front of you and they're moving at a glacial pace. They're moving like molasses running uphill. Sure. Um, that's annoying. I also think it makes people look pretty um, simplistic when they're buried in their phone all the time. It's some, there's something to be said for eye-to-eye -eye contact Absolutely. with another person. I, I get the feeling that there's some hiding going on, hiding in plain sight. Not that we were much different when I was in high school 30 mm. years ago. Yeah. I started at BC High in 1986, and what we were using were headphones. Mm -hmm. you know, if you didn't want to be bothered in the hallways, you didn't bury your head in your phone, you put your headphones on, and you looked down at the floor while you walked around. So we all had our little tricks to be like teenagers and sort of standoffish and aloof from the rest of the crowd. That one bothers me a little bit, but for the most part, no. No, I, I don't think mm. I don't think anybody who goes into this job mm. who doesn't like kids is going to be very happy, yeah. right? So, like, if you if you decided to become a teacher and you don't like spending time with children, <laughs> get out, yeah. find another job, 
because I actually do. I I mean, I like spending time with young people, and I like the fact that they come to me for advice and for help, and I learn a lot from them. In fact, I learn just as much from them as they learn from me. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm incredibly fortunate, incredibly fortunate to be able to do this job uh, in this school, and look, the school's not perfect, but I've taught in a lot of different school districts. They all have their problems. And uh, essentially, when people ask me what I do, I oftentimes I don't answer that I'm a teacher. I say, I help children, because that's really what I'm here to do. I'm here to help children in pretty much any and all capacities. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Um, just, uh, I mean, let me throw out an example. Let's say a kid has a super spinner. Now, if you don't know what that is, a uh, super spinner. Uh, I know what it is. It refers to a fidget spinner mm-hmm. in which every peg has two individual fidget spinners on it. So, yeah. <laughs> if someone was walking around with something like that, what, what would your typical response be? I'd make fun of them. Yeah? You know how, me. How would you do it? Would you quote Hamlet? Yes, I would yes. quote Hamlet because I like to make fun of people with things they don't understand at all. You know, the, the best jokes are the ones that need to be explained in depth for a long period of time. Amen to that. <laughs> Couldn't agree no, with you No, look, uh, sure, I will make fun of the fidget spinners um, under certain s- circumstances. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. If uh, your fidget spinner is the defining item of your life, that's, just that's a problem. That's unfortunate. Yeah. That's yeah. a problem, I think. But if you are legitimately like kind of using your fidget spinner as you're thinking about a math problem or if you're using it kind of in the way that it's designed to be used, and I think everything on our planet is, is designed to be used a certain way or certain ways, and everything on our planet is susceptible to abuse mm-hmm. of that. So just like drugs and pharmaceuticals yes we help people we heal people we get rid of their pain but yes they can be abused the fidget spinner is no different um i think i made a, maybe made a joke in the past to you about the fidget spinner that you want me to do now. <laughs> i remember that now we actually do have to move on to our next question which is if you could go back in time let's just say doc brown Comes up in the DeLorean, wonderful car, lost on this world. But he comes up to you and says, you can go anywhere in the past and take credit for one invention. What would that invention be and why go? I can go back in time and take credit for one invention. One. And that means I can take legal um, possession of the patent for yes. that. Yes, okay, so you collect the money. I collect the money. Okay. For this. So this and has, all the other benefits. Yeah, so this has nothing to do with the health and safety of humankind. This has everything to do with my wealth. It could, depending on your morals, but you know. Well, I think you know me well enough to know <laughs> of course. that I'm going to take the you money. You got none. Um, um, yeah, totally. No, let's see. Kidding. A good invention that I could claim credit for that maybe that helped people, because I really don't need the money. Um, not that I, I could use the money. I'm not rich, but yeah. like I'm not I'm comf- a teacher's salary. I'm comfortable. You got nothing. Yeah. It's looking good. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> am I supposed to react to this? Not at all. Although we got it, that's a I, very I yellow bald cap. I, I got to be honest. I don't Either we got to give him to. jaundice, or we've got to work on um, getting that cap to match the rest of it. I got to be real and honest. With you. I'm not even noticing what you're. Pointing Should about. I just phase out of this interview and we can phase into doppelganger Bailey? Is that what we'll go to? <laughs> Do you think he looks like you? Somewhat. Uh, Somewhat. He's got the general intelligence you think so? down. The intelligence. Yep. That's good. He's got. He needs thicker eyebrows, though. I'm gonna work on that. Oh, he's yeah. f- flipped the chip. Unfortunately, uh, we do not have enough time to continue the interview, but we are switching over to the rhyme time portion of the interview. <laughs> uh, this is rhyme time. First hint or first clue? Oh, he's putting me on the spot. Uh, I have right. to do rhyme time. A collector now. of flutes. Mm. A collector of flutes. A collector of flutes. A uh, pipe. Something arrives with pipe, or another word for flute, pipe, or... Andrew, you got anything? Viola. Uh, I don't have anything. Piccolo is a type of high-pitched flute. All right, I give up. That would be... Ooh, oh. ooh, ooh, I know, I know. That'd be a recorder hoarder. <laughs> a recorder hoarder. I didn't even get... I got the piccolo. I did not get to the recorder. Second rhyme time clue. It's <laughs> going to be your head. My head. Uh, my head. 
Something that rhymes with bald or dome. Uh, I suppose it, it kind of matches my butt, so it could be a shiny hiney. <laughs> Not quite. Mm. <laughs> shiny that sounds kind of close. What could it be? I give up. Mm. Oh, oh, a chrome dome. That would there be a you chrome go. Dome. Chrome That's dome. right. I got your you go. beat. Thank you. you That's do. all the time we have today Let's on the 108. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Timothy Bailey. Thank you. You're a saint. Thank all you. All right. This has been in 1008. We'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Bye. Leave.